Hey, hey. What? Smile, you're famous. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. And hello, everybody out there watching this video. This is Zach Hampel adding commentary for you 20 years after I filmed it. Thought we could take a little trip down memory lane together at the old Yankee Stadium. Here I am outside gate four, the home plate gate, ready to head on inside. Back in the day, weeknight games at Yankee Stadium used to start at 7.35 p.m. So that's why the White Sox were still hitting here at 6.26. And wow, that's an ugly hat right there. Sorry if that's your dad. I only filmed the tail end of batting practice. So right here, guys are jogging off the field. And then moments later, I filmed the Jumbotron for a bit. There was a really funny ad with a guy trying to catch a foul ball. Check this out. That's good stuff and it motivated me to reach into my backpack and pull out the one baseball that I'd snagged during batting practice. Here it is, an official American League ball, and then I stated my lifetime total. Number 1,012. Here I am roughly 20 minutes later, over on the first base side, just getting a shot of the seats and the stadium. And as the camera pans, you're going to see a very friendly security guard named Ronald standing with a fan known as Orca the Greek, who was famous back in the day for his ridiculous dancing. Want to do a little dance? <laughs> All right. <laughs> there were so many characters back in the 1990s at Yankee Stadium, and I truly miss them all. Anyway, here I am trying to make my way through a very crowded aisle. And that brings up an important point. A lot of people still miss this stadium. They're still upset that the Yankees tore it down. Why do they have to replace it? It was fine, it was fun, it had character, etc. Well, take a look at this narrow concourse. That's not much space for a stadium that could hold 55,000 people. And this game wasn't even close to being sold out. Can you just imagine how crowded it was when the Red Sox were in town? during the playoffs, during the World Series. It was claustrophobic and very dingy and gloomy. And look, I miss it just like everybody else, but I can also understand why the Yankees would have wanted to replace it. Yes, get excited. Game time. Here I am heading out to the short porch in right field. I wish I'd spent more time there over the years. I don't know what I was thinking, but man, I pissed away a lot of opportunities to catch home run balls. There's Paul O'Neill warming up, and if you listen closely, you'll hear the legendary Bob Shepard announce the first batter of the game. Let me apologize for the crappy camera work. I, well, first of all, I wasn't very good at filming stuff all these years ago. I still have a lot to learn, but I specifically remember that at this point when I was wandering around the stadium, I was holding the camera at chest level, not even looking through it, just so I would not draw a whole lot of attention. Yankees! Okay, time out for a second. I need to do a freeze frame and point out something pretty cool. Right there. Hang on, more specifically, right there. See how there are fans sitting on the left, but on the right, all those seats are completely empty? Well, that arrow is pointing to what was known as the cutoff line. And yes, that was actually a thing. Every game, stadium security would establish the specific spot for where the cutoff line would be based on the size of the crowd. So if there weren't too many people, everybody would be shifted way over closer to home plate, and you'd have a ton of seats up there in prime foul ball territory to go running for a ball if anybody hit one up there. Good times. It's stuff like that that really makes me miss the old Yankee Stadium and old stadiums in general because opportunities like that are pretty rare nowadays. Check out the protective screen. The way it was set up, 
it was impossible to catch foul balls behind home plate. Hey, Frankie boy! Frankie boy, huh? Well, that's one way to refer to the future Hall of Famer, Frank Thomas. There he is stepping up to the plate. And man, let me tell you, I was in love with that guy. He was just fun to look at, fun to watch, had a great attitude, and he was dominating the sport. Check out these stats here. 355 batting average, thank you very much. There's Kenny Rogers, the Yankees pitcher, who must have been nervous. I mean, a soft tossing lefty facing the big hurt? Good luck, buddy. Yup, definitely nervous. I decided to head up to the upper deck and stop off here to take a peek at all the late arrivers down below. That massive humanity, every single one of them missed their opportunity to see Frank Thomas draw a base on balls. Then I headed toward the escalator and made my way to the very top level of the stadium, passed through this tunnel, and I'll let the view speak for itself. Here's Paul O'Neill up at bat, and you're gonna see him chop the ball down the third baseline toward Robin Ventura, who fields it, makes an off-balance throw, and look, okay, Frank Thomas was a Hall of Famer for his bat. Leave the guy alone. Speaking of big bats, here's Daryl Strawberry. Touch them all, Daryl. He was one of my favorites when I was growing up, and in fact, I liked him so much that I once said that I wished he were my father. Well, my actual father took that with a smile, but never let me forget it. And that was my dinner. Yuck. First baseman, Frank Thomas. So yes, here's Frank Thomas up at bat again. He falls behind in the count 0 and 2, but I wasn't discouraged. Gotta show his stats again, his little hot streak up on the Jumbotron. However, he went down swinging. I would like to point out that he finished this game one for three with a walk. So very respectable, a nice Frank Thomas day. Here's Daryl Strawberry up at bat again, and check this out. As soon as the ball landed in the upper deck, the race for the souvenir was on. And I'm gonna give you a little spoiler because I think you'll appreciate it more. Keep your eye on that guy right there, okay? He wasn't the first one out there, but he starts climbing down from the cross aisle over that railing, jumping down over seats. No one else can find it. Even he didn't know where it was. But right there he spots it, runs to it, picks it up. What a great feeling. And what a lousy feeling for me watching all these years later. It's like, what was I doing up behind home plate in foul territory when I could have been out there maybe snagging that ball myself? Here's Daryl up for the third time. You can see on the Jumbotron, he was two for two with a pair of solo home runs. You can also see right here that it was the bottom of the fifth inning and the Yankees were on top seven to one. In case you're wondering about this high-tech video, no, there are no special effects here. I'm not fraudulently making it look like Daryl Strawberry hit three home runs. That really happened. And as you see him crossing home plate here and heading to the dugout, 
you'll get a very quick glimpse of Derek Jeter right there, number two on the top step. And now the curtain call. Yup, Yankee Stadium groundskeepers have been doing the YMCA for a long time. And you know what, I think it was fun the first 983 times that they did it, but I think it's kind of gotten old. And you know, I'm not trying to be grumpy or anything, I just think it might be time for management to consider a new song and or a new routine. Here's Mr. Strawberry up at bat for the fourth time. Obviously, everybody in the stadium wanted him to go yard, so I'll just shut up here for a moment and let you see what happened. It is high. It is far. Back, 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 back. It's caught by the left fielder. Well, that was exciting. Almost as exciting as a 9-1 to -one game and an awkward selfie of 18-year-old me. Thanks for watching.